Well, welcome everybody to today's GAPLA online talk. For those who don't know GAPLA, we are a non-for-profit organization that um, with lawyers in different countries, including Germany, Austria, Australia, New Zealand, um, and we provide a platform for discussion and exchange of experiences and ideas amongst colleagues um, around the world and our members. I'm a board member at GAPLA and on video you should see some of my fellow board members, Volker Linden, Michael Kobras and Juliane Werther. Today we will discuss the protection of trade secrets from an EU in-house perspective. And in particular, we will hear about the um, a new legislation in Germany, which implemented a recent EU directive. Um, the legislation in Germany is called the Geschäftsgeheimnis Gesetz, just sounds beautiful already. Um, mm -hmm. And um, our speaker today is our very own Volker Linden. Mm. Volker is one of the founders of GAPLA. He is a qualified uh, lawyer in Germany, uh, specializing in intellectual property. And um, he's also done his doctoral thesis in intellectual property law. He was the trademark, he worked at the trademark and license, licensing department of Merck for seven years in Germany and joined Foyd about 25 years ago, uh, where he is now the head of intellectual property management. Now, Volker will give an insight into what Freud and other companies in Germany have done to implement um, the new legislation and receive the protection of um, the trade secrets. Um, I should say that Volker will not give any legal advice during our discussion today. But of course, if you do have any questions for Volker, please raise your hand um, electronically. I hope you all know how to do that. Or you can also type your question into the chat into the chat function and we will um, either invite you to ask your question or read out your question from the chat. So I think that's all the housekeeping and I would like to now hand over to you, Volker. Yeah, thank you for this kind introduction, uh, Claudia. Um, f f first, uh, a few words on, on uh, Freud, forgive me, but it may be helpful uh, for understanding. I'm working as an in-house in, in counselor in-house attorney uh, for a family-owned private business um, machine company called Foyd, has a now about 19,000 uh, employees currently, and um, is working on, on different topics. Um, they have one branch, it's called Hydro. Um, they are responsible for renewable energy, hydropower plants, and so forth. And currently, uh, we have a big project in, in Australia on a pump storage power plant called Snowy Mountain. Uh, one or two people may be um, familiar with that. It's, it's uh, a, a big investment, at least, for uh, the second largest um, order we ever received. Um, the third part, uh, the second part is of Hoy Turbo, working with acceleration uh, systems of every kind, even marine. Um, you have seen the, um, the recent trouble in uh, Egypt when the canal was closed. And um, I'm happy to say that our small ships with our um, acceleration system resolved, helped to resolve the, the crisis. And last but not least, um, the paper business, paper-related business, and that means we supply machines for paper factories. And these are some sometimes enormous machines of more than 300 meters length and uh, four stories high. It's unbelievable. Someone said it's um, the most complicated um, uh, machine on this planet other than uh, 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 air, um, air carriers. Well, having said that, it, it means we have a lot to do with with um, trade secrets and um, and um, of course um, uh, drawings, and uh, recently more and more with software, as our machines have, of course. Now, um, every every machine is equipped with software, and we are in the position to sell software without hardware. 
it becomes more and more of a business. Yeah, protection of trade secrets in Germany. Um, the title is somewhat different from, from the introduction, but um, in essence, it's the same because the European directive um, applies for all European countries, which are members, member states, and of course, also to Germany. Um, what happens there? The um, directive, um, it's actually a long title on undisclosed know-how and business information, trade secrets and so forth, aligns existing national laws. That means we had a bunch, we are uh, more than 20 member states and we had 20 different, more than 20 different legislations and different approaches how to protect trade secrets. And um, it um, was uh, seen as a, as a major obstacle to, to um, this unified market, which we want to set up. And hence it was decided to have one directive to really align all existing laws. And this um, took place in 2016. And uh, the member states had two years time until and, uh, 2018 to implement these uh, rules. Um, Germany succeeded in April 2019. What's, um, I'm just um, re referring briefly to that. Um, what, what is the, uh, the target of the uh, trade secret directive? It defines trade secrets. It harmonizes the civil means. The civil means, that means we have now one system, which by the way is more or less identical with um, what you can gain when you have a patent infringement case. You can stop unfull use. You can uh, remove the goods from the market. And of course, you have a right to compensate damages. And um, the trade secret directive also give um, clear um, tools how to implement the proceedings. And last not least, um, it clarifies that reverse engineering and parallel innovation must be possible. It's allowed. Until the new law in Germany, the situation was um, uh, was clear. There was one one criminal law provision. That means it was actually two in the um, um, law of unfair competition. That means you had criminal law provisions only, which of course have to be restricted, have to be interpreted um, restrictively. Other than that, you had um, the possibility to say it's. Um, we have concluded a, a confidentiality agreement and you have breached it. So you know, could also then enforce civil action. Um, but that was it. On the other hand, confidential was seen everything which you as the owner had demonstrated uh, that you would like to protect it as a trade secret. And it was sometimes even enough to say, um, I see it as my trade secret. And uh, then it was um, uh, seen as a trade secret if you were not possible to, to bring in a, another impression to the court. Now the trade uh, secret definition is uh, much more concrete. Um, uh, if to be, be seen as secret, it must not be generally known. It must have a commercial value, and you must. It must have been subject to reasonable steps to preserve its secrecy. In Germany, in our uh, national law, we have an ad additional uh, requirement, which I don't see as a as a real problem because it must. Um, there must be a, a legitimate interest to protect the information as a trade secret. I say when you have demonstrated that you see it as a trade secret, um, which you have to do anyway, um, you have also automatically fulfilled this, this requirement of a leg legitimate interest. Yeah, you must demonstrate yet that you have an interest. And um, this also is um, further clarified um, with the provision of what is an unlawful acquisition. 
it's an unlawful um, acquisition if the result is un of unauthorized access. That, and um, again, what is reasonable steps then? You must have an internal trade secret protection concept. Does it mean that you have to register your key trade secrets, which should then be subject to further protection? Should you put your manuals, recipes, formulas into one uh, safe? Well, the companies uh, react differently to it. Um, uh, recently, I had a discussion with um, with uh, uh, Tussen Krupp. They set up a uh, team of uh, quite a few members and they worked for more than a year on defining what are their trade secrets and how should they um, res uh, how should they treat them? Um, are their trade secrets more more secret than the uh, or more important than the rest? They made a real a real concept which uh, which was. Uh, which was very expensive, I say, in the end for the whole um, uh, uh, group. Um, my partner, my, my discussion partner was uh, the head of, of um, IP of, of um, Tussen, and he said that they, they set up um, that all key um, information were, were now st uh, were set up in, in one and stored in, in one separate um, 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 computer system, um, and um, this creates sometimes uh, nowadays uh, problems that also the uh, email communication goes via that and uh, is separate from uh, from the rest of the company's um, information systems. Yeah, you must of course have internal confidentiality policies to assure ensure appropriate documents. Uh, are marked as um, confidential, question mark. We decided we should do that and use password protection systems. And of course, um, you should look whether, how to, to store your, your materials. How did we do it here at Freud? We have a and then Volker, just a quick quick question in between, because because in in our preparation call you said you're you're often also speaking to other heads of IP departments. So, what was your impression? I, I believe Foyt was quite well organized already before that law entered into place. Um, but what was your impression on other companies? Was it quite a, a huge hurdle for them to to even like qualify which information they would like to be a trade secret? Um, I see it, in, it's, it's, it's really in the heads of, of um, all IP people that they have to set up a protection concept. But um, I see uh, that um, smaller companies um, have real problems in, 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 in in forwarding uh, this this idea um, um, within the companies, it, it costs time, money, and resources to set up such a, such a protection concept. Even though it's understood by everybody working in in, in, in IP that we have to do that, um, I have the impression that um, so far. Um, the attitude is very different from company to company. Thank you. Yeah, time consuming, resources consuming. How did we do it? We have a three category system, um, information which is um, for internal use only, which is confidential or even strictly confidential. Um, this is laid down in a group directive, which has to be implemented and followed by all companies uh, within Freud. And when you see the information, the definition of, of uh, confidentiality, confidential, um, it's somewhat 
fraud, isn't it? Information whose unauthorized disclosure may endanger the achievement of product and project objectives or may adversely affect the innovation activity of the company. And um, we have put some, some examples as to that. Um, loss of customers, decline in sales, compensation claims of individuals, negative impact on innovation. Um, we put that decentralized. Every product owner is responsible to apply this system and to decide what is to be seen as confidential and what not. And if you see something um, as confidential, you have to label it as confidential. And you must guarantee that's um, only a limited um, range of authorized employees who have access to this or authorized third, uh, third parties. And you have also somewhat stored it under confidential um, marks. Um, becomes more strict with the definition of strictly confidential. Information whose unauthorized, unauthorized disclosure may sustainably, sustainably endanger the achievement of corporate objectives, because uh, considerable loss, significant decline, massive claims, you see, loss of important innovations and patents. Um, I'm happy to say that all our uh, patents and um, innovations which come into my realm are treated as strictly confidential. They are labeled as such on every page. Um, as only a very limited group of people have um, access to it, and we store it on a, um, a separate um, in, an information system. And normally, the data is encrypted. It's also encrypted when we um, have contact with our attorneys. Our attorneys get, um, get, um, get a code and, and they get access to the information on our information system, in-house information system um, for the defined documents. Michael, you have a question. Yeah, um, when you say when you say that you mark your patents uh, confidential, aren't they aren't they published anyway as part of the process? Yeah, of course. No, we don't. I don't mark patents as, as confidential because they are patent. Um, absolutely right, um, uh, are published, but as long as they are not published. All right. Basically, when you are when you are developing something that you do not disclose, yeah. which could lead to not being able to patent it anymore, is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you, you for clarification. So, is um, the next step which we did already um, before? Um, you. you you have um, claims when there's a breach of a confidentiality agreement or other contractual arrangements. That means it's a must in our, um, in our contacts to third parties, uh, which are more than a polite uh, discussion on day-to-day uh, -day, uh, topics, that we have to, have to uh, make a confidentiality agreement. It's a must, and this is really implemented and, and strictly followed within our group here. Yeah. And um, there's a third point, which is um, really interesting to us. Now it's also unlawful to acquire, use, or disclose a trade secret if it is known or ought to be known that the trade secret was obtained from someone who himself was using or disclosing the trade secret unlawfully. And this is a, a situation which in our business you come across, I would say even on a day-to-day -day business, um, take a power plant. Power plants live for a long time and they run sometimes 30 years without without any problems and nobody goes into this uh, premise. 
But when you have to service it and to repair anything, it may be a, a, the power plant of, of uh, uh, which was set up by, by uh, a competitor, a competitor of us. And um, now our customer gives us um, the drawings. Um, are we allowed to use them? We are definitely not allowed to use them when there's a confidentiality clause um, marked marked on this on this this drawing. What so? What if not? Or take the other situation: a competitor get access to to our drawings, and hence, um, more than once, I I had to to write letters to create bad bad faith. Um, to our customers and somewhat and sometimes to our our um, competitors and saying, hey, um, this is a trade secret, our drawings. Yeah, reverse engineering is now allowed, officially allowed, and that's new for Germany, believe it or not. I'm convinced that everybody did it before but it was not allowed. And it was um, even uh, in court, it, um, a famous decision regarding gambling machines. Of course, um, everybody is interested uh, to know how, how this gambling machine is running and um, opened uh, the gambling machine and analyzed how it's working. Um, that was, of course, unlawful. But it was unlawful because reverse engineering in itself was unlawful. It's now clarified that it's not and no more unlawful. And um, now you are in the situation that you may have the wish to, um, to forbid it yourself. And so you must have a clause in uh, confidentiality agreements if you are interested that um, you will not have the uh, third party analyzing your product, which you inform about, that um, reverse engineering is not allowed. Any further general consequences? Do you need to train your employees? I say yes, and we do. Every FOIT employee gets a training on confidential information, on what is to be treated confidential. Um, do you have to have exit interviews with employees leaving the company? I say yes, at least for the uh, for the employees uh, with an academic background and working in R and D or having to do with, um, with um, um, external contacts. And um, more than once, I'm now writing exit letters referring to specific matters which should be treated as confidential because it's obviously not, not sufficient just to have a confidentiality clause in the um, uh, labor contract. But uh, when a employee leads, uh, leaves the company, you say, um, we regret that you are leaving our company. However, um, we have to accept that. Um, you worked on uh, very uh, interesting topics, which we would like to see, which we see as trade secrets, namely project A, B, and C. And we kindly remind you that you have to treat that also in the future confidential. Do you need any any additional non -spe special non disclosure measures during business trips? Um, I'm strongly behind this idea, and um, one idea is um, having special travel books, notebooks. If you if you travel, for instance, to China, and not to bring in your own mobile phone but to have a special mobile phone for travels. Um, 
But this idea, unfortunately, is not implemented all over the company so far. I'm working hard on it. Well, that's about it from my perspective. Do you have any questions?